back for another episode of Worth It. And we're not just noodling around here, but we are covering noodles. Noodles. We've done many types of noodles in the past. Pasta, spaghetti, ramen. Today, we're focusing on non-Italian noodles in Los Angeles. Today on Worth It, we're gonna be trying three delicious noodle dishes at three drastically different price points to find out which noodle is the most worth it at its price. Okay, so we're sticking specifically to Asian dishes. The first place we're going to, where are we going? We're going to Laosher Noodle House to see Joe and Ellen, and we're having their wife's special noodle dish. Sweet, very, very sweet. Like, the story is sweet, like it's a it's It is a actually a sweet story. How did you come to start this business together? It's history. I can't find my favorite noodle in LA. It was different than what you were used to? Very different. Yeah. You want to keep the original style from my hometown, yeah. Shanxi province, northwest of China. I'm curious how many styles of noodle there are from your hometown. More than a thousand um, different. More than a thousand yeah. different styles? Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. The cat's ear noodle, mao er du, also in my hometown we make a lot. Most of the time when make it with lamb or beef soup. Actually, it's very similar like macaroni noodle. Knife cut noodle is a flat and a thick noodle. That noodle, we usually make stir fry. We are focusing on the wife's special noodle dish. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us what is the story behind that dish? Introduce this to Joe. She's my wife. <laughs> 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 我是学唱歌的，他是学钢琴的。然后呢，他给我当了一年的钢琴伴奏。后来呢，他教我们几个同学上他们家吃饭，就给做了一个这面条，就觉得特别好吃。然后我当时就觉得，哎，这个娶回
I know exactly what I want, but I want to ask Yidi what we should eat. The donkey roll. The donkey roll? Yes. Okay. Do you want to start with a donkey roll? Mm, that's not the best one, Yidi. You're wrong. <laughs> I'm a sesame roll kind of guy. Mmm. 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 Before we enjoy the rest of these desserts, let's enjoy a noodle fact. Noodle fact for your noodle. Oh wow, no aren't all facts noodle facts? Yeah. Because they improve your noodle. Yeah, I, I did that joke just now. The Chinese, generally speaking, don't dry their pasta, but Italians do. I have never made that distinction. For our spaghetti episode, mm -hmm. we saw spaghetti extruded, but they allowed it to dry before boiling, whereas at Laosher, it extruded straight into the water. I think it's because it's not optimized for that al dente flavor that uh -huh. you get from drying. It explains so much of why I like Chinese noodles more than pasta. Yeah? Because they're just... Squishier? Squishier, yes. Mm. So for our next noodle stop, we're going to see Bugra at Dolan's Uyghur Cuisine, where we're gonna be trying their big plate chicken. Before we have that, we're gonna eat the rest of these desserts. Okay, so, um, got the camera. Let us go to town. I like it. Mmm. What is Uyghur cuisine? The Uyghur region is located at the middle point of the Silk Road. It's influenced by the Persian, the Indian, Turkish, and Chinese. Many people ask us, you guys have kebab and you guys have some wok dish. How do you invent this? But actually, this is original Uyghur food. Our chef, Arkin, is going to do all dishes today. What are the highlight dishes of Uyghur cuisine? In the ancient time, the Uyghur people do kebab in the desert. So you make a fire and you oh. make that tower, and its shape is like that fire. Polo is very traditional raised rice and meats, and carrots, raisins together. Manta it looks like a Chinese dumpling, but bigger. The dough is very thin. It's stuffed with beef and onion and spices. So talking about the big plate chicken. chicken. So I imagine it's big. Yes, it's huge. I thought this was a noodle episode, Andrew. This is a noodle dish, right? Of course, yeah, it comes with noodle. This is like very typical uh, Chinese and vegan fusion. We fry the chicken with the oil and peppers and spices. Cinnamon, cumin, star anise, strand pepper. So this is spicy. We put the potato and we braise half an hour. We also make the handmade noodle. Noodle itself should be chewy. We make the noodle with water, salt, and egg whites. Egg whites in, in egg the whites, dough? Yeah, because it makes it really chewy. And it's thick noodle. This is the difference between big plate chicken noodle with the other noodle dish. Yeah, it should be thick and white. I noticed with the big plate chicken, all the noodles are covered by the things on top. Why are you trying to build this mountain of meat on top of the noodle? Because the big plate chicken, it has soup. So when you eat the noodle, mix it with the soup, it's like amazing taste. I've never seen a teacup like this before. All are handmade. Wow. Handmade? Yeah. Flower tea. This is very common in my country. This is also sort of my creation. Cheers. Mm. Don't Cheers. spill the tea. Mmm. Oh yeah. Ooh. Rose. Is there cinnamon in here? Yes. Cinnamon. Cardamom. Mm. Cardamom. You ready for some big plate chicken, Steven? Big plate chicken, here we go. My goodness. Mm. Okay, we got we got one noodle sticking out over here. Okay. Should we start with chicken since yeah. this is big plate chicken? Wow, that smells good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a little spicy. The taste yeah. that comes with it? Linger. There we go. A noodle. Oh, I want one of those kinds of noodles. That one's been sitting below the weight yeah. of the chicken. Got it, I got it's it. It's delicious yeah. looking, right? Okay. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Oh man. Whoa. The noodle itself is very dumpling-like. Dumpling-like. And it's softness. It's like you're eating a dumpling yeah. in one noodle. It really is like a soup at the bottom. I know, why but don't I, we have a spoon? I think it's because the noodle is your spoon. It's, oh and I, <laughs> Sound and, and, of spoons. As we say that, thank you so much. See this peppercorn here? It's all going in. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Really? Okay, I need you to You gotta do it. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Focus in on the tongue. The heat builds a little bit. The numbing peppercorn is there that. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. The addition of cinnamon is really surprising and delightful. But it reminds me of Malaysian cuisine. A lot of the dishes there are literally marriages. There's no better description of this than a marriage of dishes. It's, it's delicious. I get it. I get why they say stop noodling around. Because uh, it takes a long time to eat a noodle. Is that it? Sometimes when you get out of a movie and you're like, 
I don't know what to say. Like when you finish a good book and you just need to like take a walk and do nothing. Or like one and a half hour drive across Los Angeles all the way to Beverly Hills. Cause that's where we're going next. But before that happens. Noodle fact. Historians believe that Chinese noodles originated more than X years ago in the Han Dynasty. What is X? I don't, have to guess if you know. I don't know how old the Han Dynasty is. 1,500 years ago. Now double that and then add 1,000. 4,000 4, years, years ago. ago? I wonder what the first shape was. You Whoa. find that funny, I never thought of that before. <laughs> yeah, what was the first noodle shape? Oh, noodle, oh, noodle shape. shape. Yeah, me too. <laughs> China has been making bread longer than they've been making noodles, and noodle making stemmed from the ripping of dough into boiling water. Whoa! Whoa. Okay, going cross town, making my way across town. Now headed to Crustacean, a landmark Vietnamese American spot. We're gonna be having An's famous garlic noodles, and on top of that, Dungeness crab. The noodles are a creation of the founder of the restaurant, Lean An, and she's kept the recipe secret. So they are made in a secret kitchen, and we can't go in there. We'll be speaking with Chef Tony. Maybe he can spill the beans on these noodles. That's okay. I mean, Oprah actually filmed here, and she wasn't allowed in there. So uh, we're pretty much Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that your kitchen operates somewhat in secret. Somewhat. Yeah. We have a kitchen within a kitchen. That kitchen's for family members and people that have worked in the restaurant for over 10 years. Why? My boss, Chef Helene An, she first started way back in the 70s in this little deli and slowly putting Asian flares here and there. She knew she was onto something, so she wanted to keep it within the family. We have about four items that come from Secret Kitchen only. The garlic noodles have been around since it's been open. She saw that everybody loved spaghetti and like Parmesan, so that was her inspiration. She was just named the mother of Asian fusion. This is the signature dish of the restaurant. Asian fusion has been looked at in a variety of ways. Where I grew up, it was looked down on. But you're doing Asian fusion and it's right here in Beverly Hills. How are you able to flip the narrative of an Asian fusion food? I think it was just something cool for people to, to hate on fusion, but the way I became very comfortable about it is when I spoke with Helene. She didn't even really know what fusion was. She's like, I just cooking the way I want to cook. Now, if we're grabbing from different regions of the world, as long as you're doing it intelligently, the end result should be pretty tasty. And so this is our last stop in our video. It's the $3 signs. But the noodles themselves are not really the expensive thing here, right? Generally, if you're getting a crab, you're always getting a garlic noodle, but there are two separate items on the menu. I would say 99.9% .9 people that get the crab, they always get a noodle. To enjoy the noodles to their best. This is not a question. You have to get the crab. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Whoa. This smells like my fire alarm is about to go off. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It feels like something you shouldn't do at a restaurant this nice, but I do just want to go. <laughs> Caviar cheese. Oh man, that's so awesome. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, there's the hit of garlic. <laughs> it takes about two seconds. One crab in the shell and one crab picked out the shell. Nice. Wow. And bibs? No way. Yes. <laughs> This is way more simple than I thought. Right. Cheers. Oh yeah, it's really good. Huh. I just want to eat this whole bowl. Huh. It's so fluffy. Squishy, fluffy noodle. Fluffy yeah. noodle. I'm going to do a little bit of crab. Isn't this the life? Pre-picked crab. Mmm. Yeah. It's really good, right? This is my fantasy as a kid of what a dish should taste like. This is so close to the buttered noodles you'd eat as a kid, right? Add on the best version of a buttery thing. Buttery crab meat. Pre-picked crab, okay, is like birds who get to eat food that's already been chewed up for them by their parents. Talking about when a mama bird chews up food and then throws it up into <laughs> the chickling's mouth. The idea of having food prepared for you. It's a mother's love, right? It's great. Now, how do you make it? That's the question.
Long noodles, long life. Long day. That's what they say. One thing that was your favorite thing that was not a noodle today. The noodle extruder at Lauscher Noodle House. That was like a old fashioned manual train cart. At Crustacean, below the floor, there's a fish tank and there's a lot of beautiful koi fish living down there. Okay, Andrew, which noodle was the most worth it at its given price? I'll give a honorable mention to the cat's ear noodle from Lao Shur. My worth it winner is gonna go to Dolan's Uyghur Cuisine. Oh my gosh. So good. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. We agree for once. I love crustacean, and I was gonna say Lao Shur because the vast experiences you get in one bowl. My worth it winner goes to Dolan's Uyghur Cuisine. Adam, who is your worth it winner? Annie, who's your favorite noodle from today? And Yidi, while we're in the neighborhood. <laughs> well, that does it for episode two in our end of year mini series. Come back next week for a very crispy conclusion. It also has soft ends. Right, chicken sandwich. Oh, come on, Adam.